The other day, Sierraji spoke about the seventh of the nine causes for sharpening the ruling faculties. That is, Kayecha Jivitecha, Anapekatang Upatapeti, that one has, has to have an attitude towards one's body. One has to think of it as though it's just a lifeless corpse, just a dead body. If you think of it like that, you won't be very interested in it. And the life force that is part of us, one should think about it as though it were an enemy. One has no need to worry about the welfare of one's enemy. One should think about this as the welfare of one's enemy is nothing to do with us. One should not consider one's life or limb when one is engaged in the practice. When a soldier fights the enemy, if he worries for himself or if he worries for his family, then he's not going to be able to focus on the number one task, which is winning. He has to overcome the enemy. So one can't have consideration at that time. When painful feelings arise, if one, if one has consideration, if one favors one's body or has consideration for one's life, then one will change position often. And when one changes position, one loses the chance to gain samadhi, to build one's concentration. So when one does this, one is basically giving up in facing the feeling because one won't be able to gain concentration. So when one sits and a little bit of concentration has arisen, then painful feelings start to arise. And at that time, we can't give up in that time. So we should consider our body at that time just like a corpse, just like a dead body. And one should consider the life, the life force as one's enemy. There's a saying uh, in Burmese that if you tilt, if you tilt the cup, then what's in it will spill out. So if you, when one considers one's life and limb in this situation of the practice where one is making wholehearted effort, daringly taking risks, if one has some consideration for one's life and or body at that time, what happens is the, the virya, sati, samadhi, and panya they will just spill out. So you want to keep on facing the object straight on without this consideration for the body or life so that those faculties, sati, samadhi, panya, won't spill out. When one, if one practices with consideration for one's body, for oneself, if one favors the body, then it will be hard to gain any, any dhamma in one or two months. There won't really be any progress. One should show no mercy towards one's body or life. And this, is not, this does not bring harmful results. Instead, it brings beneficial results. And this is what Sayadaji said, talked about the other day. Today, what Sayadaji would like to speak about is how when we are engaged in this, uh, in this practice that is without uh, consideration or favoring life or limb, courageous effort is very much needed. It is said, Tatacha abibuya nekamena this means tata. Tata refers to 
one's body and within our body the nama and rupa in our in us there's this life this life force which keeps us alive which moves within us we have to get the upper hand abibuya over this and how we do it is nekamena with with fearia when one faces some trouble the tendency is to back up to retreat and instead of this if we do that we won't be able to overcome the difficulty so what we need is this nekama this sturdy uh, sturdiness and strength in the face of difficulty and this is virya so one overcomes the difficulties with virya a courageous effort and when one does this the bhavana mind bhavana consciousness can develop and reach fulfillment so there's mental pain there's physical pain mental and physical feelings these are always going to happen there these are always with us so we can't have consideration for these we have to gain the upper hand over our over the f- difficult feelings mental and physical and we do this with fury and courageous effort if we try we can do it and uh, if if in one or two or three attempts this the difficulty doesn't come back then this is overcoming that difficulty practicing satipatthana bhavana as now initially one didn't know that there were these true nature sabhavas within ourselves that are related as cause and effect and because of not knowing one didn't have faith in this and and thus um the faith was very weak so when faith is weak then if someone comes along and tries to tell you you know um, to do something else to follow something else to stop this method or whatever then one tends to follow follow them when this is what happens when faith is weak and today there are many different types of beliefs in the world so if one doesn't uh, have strong faith then one can be persuaded um, and one will just go along when one meets up with someone who's a good speaker that can happen or when one uh, is encountered with someone who threatens one that can also happen there are various ways that uh, people can use to try to persuade but when one has strong faith in a path of practice that is reliable then one is able to control oneself in this type of situation there's all so this is the power of faith there's also the power of virya the power of sati of being able to um to be able to be observant the power of samadhi keeping the mind collected the power of panya so if one has these powers the powers of faith virya sati samadhi panya then no matter how others come and try to persuade one the strength of one's faith will overcome 
any tendency, tendency towards lack of faith. The strength of one's courage will overcome laziness and the other kilesas. Uh, the strength of one's sati protects the mind so that kilesas can't come in. Samadhi causes the mind to become collected so that it is not dispersed. And panya uh, keeps us from being persuaded no matter how good the speaker is, no matter how persuasive. Uh, those who... Um, the panya will keep us from being persuaded, from being pulled over to another side. Those who practice the Dhamma develop the ability to weigh or consider what is beneficial and what is not. This is called Sataka Sampajanya. And something may be beneficial, but one has to also consider whether it is suitable or not suitable. And this is called sapaya sampajanya. When one encounters the opportunity to say something or do something or plan something on behalf of oneself or on behalf of others, then these two abilities, the ability to weigh what is uh, beneficial and not, and the ability to weigh whether that is suitable or not, sataka sampajanya and sapaya sampajanya, these two are very uh, essential. And this is called nepaka, nipaka pinya. It's also called pariharika pinya. And this is the wisdom to avoid what is unbeneficial and unsuitable and to do what is beneficial and suitable. So if, when one has these two types of wise, um, types of clear seeing, sataka sampajanya and sapaya sampajanya, the ability to weigh what is beneficial and what is not, and to weigh what is suitable and what is not, then their wisdom matures. And when wisdom is mature, then one has the courage to do what is beneficial and suitable and to avoid what is not. If one doesn't practice, one will only know these from, in a, from a theoretical standpoint. But now with the practice, one knows these, one comes to gain these abilities, and they become very definite. So, <clears throat> yogis who practice without regarding their life or limb, uh, seeing that when one regards has consideration for life and limb, this only causes loss. But if one can disregard body and life with courageous effort, then the controlling faculties become very special. The virya, our effort, becomes quite uh, distinct, very special. And because of that, the power of faith becomes better. The power of virya also, through our disregard for life and limb, the power of courage becomes better. Sati, the power of sati also becomes better, as does the power of samadhi. The ruling faculties become very specially developed. Uh, um, when we make effort in this way, especially at the stage of Uddhya So then one understands that one should go all out when facing difficulties. So 
initially one isn't able to do this in the practice, and then there were times when one would uh, one would not be able to overcome the difficulties. But with uh, when one gains in the practice and one is able to go at, face difficulties with courage, then faith becomes a strong uh, controlling faculty and so does effort. Sati also, samadhi and panya. In the texts, it is uh, the sobhana chetasikas, the beautiful concomitant mind states are mentioned and these are very beautiful in themselves. And also the mind, the consciousness that is associated with these beautiful concomitant mind states, sobhana chetasikas, is also beautiful. And the body, which is connected with the mind, also becomes beautiful without the use of makeup. Because the mind is beautified with these beautiful mind states, the body also becomes beautified. And even people who are originally ugly become beautiful through the practice. And especially this is obvious at the higher stages of the practice. So, and this is done without any makeup. Women tend to spend a lot of money on makeup, but this beautification can be accomplished without spending anything at all. And those, for, for those who like beauty, Satipatthana is a very appropriate practice for such people. If one is a human, then from all directions one has various kinds of demands, one kinds of things that one has to do. So from a young age we need to get an education, and then when we get an education, then we're concerned with making a living. And, of course, there's health. We want to have good health and social relations. These are all areas of concern, uh, areas that we need to pay attention to in the world. And, you know, in an area where something uh, one needs to... an area that one needs to be involved in, one should have some objective for it. If in such worldly areas one doesn't have an objective, then one is just floating along the river and one's life won't be very meaningful. In addition to this, uh, this life is not the end of everything. So in this life, one should work to make one's physical, verbal, and mental behavior pure and clean, free of blame. And so the physical behavior is concerned, can, uh, we control the, uh, control physical behavior and verbal behavior with sila, morality, by undertaking morality. And with a suitable method, we strengthen the mind so that it also has good control. And then develop knowledge. So we develop knowledge, first of all, of, uh, uh, the initial knowledge, developing it more and more fully until it becomes fully developed. So if we do this, and this sila, samadhi, and panya, morality, concentration, and wisdom become, uh, become complete in a very special way, then one's life becomes very beautiful. And one will have faith in the practice 
as well as in the teacher who taught it. Because one sees that what one has gained oneself through the practice, one will want others, starting with those around one, to have the same thing. And when they give you an opening to do so, then you can urge them. If, because if they practice, they'll gain happiness. Because one has developed the ruling faculties, one is able to control oneself. One is able to control one's life. And this is very important in the world. This is a most important task. We know it's a most important task because it's something that has to be done. It can't not be done. And we have to do it by ourselves. We can't <clears throat> get somebody else to do it for us. It has to be done in time and on time. In time, doing this practice in time, means that we have to do it while we still have enough health, we still have enough strength, we have the opportunity. And on time means that we have to do it continuously without a break. And lastly, it has many, many benefits. And when one develops the practice, one develops the powers that are needed to control oneself and one's life becomes very good when one has this control. One has a peaceful life. One has made one's own world peaceful by gaining this self-control and one also does not harm one's environment. There should be many people in the world like this and then the world would be very peaceful. So try and see what happens. Last, lastly, the ninth, ninth cause for sharpening the faculties, the ruling faculties, is antara cha, abhyosanena. Antara, this means in the middle in the middle means one has started doing the work, the task of practice, but one hasn't reached one's goal. As Sayadawji mentioned, one should have an objective in doing this. And until one reaches that correct objective, one should not stop. Sayadawji feels that uh, one should at least establish the goal of sotapanahood. For one who wants a guarantee for their life, they should have this goal. And before reaching it, one should not give up or back up or retreat. One should not surrender. So uh, one should not... One should not give up until one, re one reaches the goal that one has been aiming for, the goal that one has made a determination to reach. Before one reaches that stage, uh, to the extent that one's desire for the other person's welfare, metta, becomes good, Karuna also uh, becomes good. One doesn't want others to suffer. So one practices to understand oneself and one gains self-mastery. One gains the power to control oneself. The Buddha, because he practiced he gained three knowledges in brief. They're just referred to as pudi'a. So he gained 
the knowledge of pre his previous lives. And he eliminated all the moisture of the kilesas. And he saw with the divine eye. He saw things with the divine eye. So he gained these three types of knowledge. And with this, looking at his past lives, he saw that there were good and bad uh, mixed, and that just like other people, that when uh, there were times that due to defilements that his life was in a bad situation. And when looking at the future, he saw that if if one doesn't gain the Dhamma, if one is not able to master oneself, then one will suffer. The Buddha, with his practice, uprooted ignorance and all the kilesas. Because there was no more ignorance, Whenever he reflected on something, he could know that thing. So he could know anything that he reflected upon. And he looked at beings with this knowledge. When he did, he saw the situation of beings in the world, great compassion arose. And the yogis too, Although the yogis are not exactly like the Buddha, but when one gains special dhamma for oneself, one tends to reflect upon the others in one's life. If at this time one doesn't practice, then one reaches suffering. So the Buddha, he's... He was very strong, and he, he was endowed with virtue, virtue and with knowledge and conduct, vijacharana sampana. So he guarded himself with knowledge, and he protected beings with great compassion. It said, atano pinyaya rekanto, Parang Karunaya Rekati, that the Buddha, while, while guarding himself with Panya, protected others with compassion. And also, when protecting others with compassion, he guarded himself with wisdom. So he accomplished two things at a blow. With one's knowledge, one guards oneself with panya, and with, with the wisdom that one has, one refrains from harming others. Or, at times, because of the wish one has, not wanting others to suffer, one refrains from harming them and protects oneself with wisdom. So in the world, this is very much needed. And although uh, Sayadaw is not expecting that we can do this countrywide over the whole country, but if one can make an oasis in the desert, in this desert of the world, if one can make one's own individual oasis, try to make this and then try to make more and more of these oases, to do this is very important. When practicing the Dhamma of Satipatthana, respectfully, meticulously, and continuously, as Sayadawji said, bhavana knowledge occurs. And then the power of faith develops 
At that time, one becomes able to reflect on whether something is beneficial or not, suitable or not. And with this reflective ability, one is able to control oneself so as not to harm others. True compassion arises because one understands by knowing oneself, one knows how others would feel if they were hurt. And thus, not wanting to harm others, one refrains. And, one, and thus, one controls oneself. By protecting, one, by protecting others, one controls oneself. So, this is something that the people of the world have a responsibility to do. Satipatthana Bhavana has a guarantee. Try. This is guaranteed to work.